Light. It's something that has been essential to humanity's development throughout history. So, for something so important to our lives, it would seem like a good idea to actually understand how it works. What's it made of? How it moves and how it interacts with other objects. Since it's something so common, it can't be too hard to understand what light is. Right? With that in mind, I decided to do my own little research to see how much people really know about light. I started off with a deceptively simple question. What is light? The answers were... interesting. They went more or less something along the lines of this. What do you mean? Light is just light. There's nothing more to it. From concerningly multiple sources. After this experience, I decided to hone it down a little. I made it a multiple choice question. Is light a wave or a particle? Of all the people asked, 30% said that light is a particle and 70% said that light is a wave. So which one's the correct answer? This question has been plaguing scientists for countless years. The question of what light is has been asked since ancient Greek times. However, for this video, we're going to focus on the debate about light between the 1600s to the 1700s, or more specifically, between Huygens and Newton. Let's start with the more known of the two, Sir Isaac Newton an English physicist, mathematician, and astronomer. In his book titled Optics, published in 1704, Newton proposed that light consists of little masses called corpuscles. These masses obey the laws of physics in the same way as any other particles, such as golf balls or planets. The masses are also so small that, when the two beams cross, they do not scatter each other. Newton used his light model to explain many known properties of light, including reflection. It was known that when light reflects off a smooth surface, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. This is also how an elastic, frictionless ball bounces off a smooth surface. The similarities between the two supported Newton's model. Another property of light that was explained by Newton's particle theory was refraction. Newton believed that matter is made up of particles of some kind. However, he wasn't sure what those particles are. Today, we call them atoms. According to the corpuscle theory, when a light corpuscle is deep within a medium, such as air or water, it is surrounded on all sides by an equal number of the medium's particles. For this idea to work, we must assume there is an attractive force between the light particles and the matter particles. If that is the case, then deep within a medium, the attractive forces cancel each other out and there is no net force on the light particle. If there is no net force, then according to Newton's first law, the light will continue to move in a straight line. However, when the light particles needs the boundary between two mediums, it's a different story. Due to the differences in optical density of the mediums, there will be more particles on one side than the other, meaning the light particle will experience a net force there would be a slight attractive force towards the denser medium as it has more particles. This increases the vertical component of its velocity, however its horizontal velocity remains constant. This brief increase in vertical velocity deflects the light particle towards the surface of the normal, which agrees with what is observed. Another observation he explained using the particle theory was the reflection of some portion of light when it enters different mediums. He called this the theory of fits. That is, the light particles that fit between the atoms of the new medium will get refracted, while the particles that couldn't fit will get reflected. Newton's particle theory explained other properties of light such as colour. One of these is the separation of a beam of white light into different colours when it passes through a prism. Simple observation shows that red light refracts the least and blue the most. Newton explained this by stating the mass of the particles varies with the colour. He concluded that red light particles have more mass than blue light particles, meaning they would be deflected less once they have crossed materials. This difference comes from their different inertia. Red light, with more mass, will have more inertia, which means they will be deflected less by the same attraction force than the blue light particles. Newton believed very strongly that light is a particle, and given that he was such an important scientist in the 17th to 18th century, no one really questioned him. At the same time, Christian Huygen, a relatively unknown Dutch mathematician, physicist and astronomer, published a paper on his theory that light is a wave or wavefront. 
He proposed that every point of a wavefront may be considered the source of secondary wavelets that spread out in all directions with a speed equal to the speed of the propagation of the wave. He used this model to explain reflection, refraction, and the diffraction of light. Reflection and refraction can be explained using the help of this animation. The red semicircles moving towards the interface are the individual wavelets, and the straight line they form is the wavefront. As seen in the diagram, the wavefront formed is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Blue semicircles are the refracted wavelets, which also form a wavefront, while the red semicircles moving away from the interface are the reflected wavefronts. The lines passing through the center of each beam denotes the direction of propagation. Refraction occurs when a wavefront of light propagates through a medium at an angle towards a second medium with a different refractive index. When the wavefront encounters the interface, a portion of the light is reflected and another part is refracted. As seen in the tutorial, according to the wavelet model, a small portion of the initial angled wavefront, which is the red incoming waves, hits the second medium before the rest of the wavefront reaches the interface. This portion of the wavefront begins to move through the second medium, while the rest of the wave is still travelling through the first medium. Therefore, if the two mediums have different refractive indexes, then the wavefront would be travelling at two different speeds, causing it to bend towards the normal. If this is hard to visualise, imagine the wavefronts as a toy car, and the wavelets being the individual wheels. If you imagine pushing this toy car at an angle from tile, which has a lower refractive index, to carpet, which has a higher refractive index, you would see the car refract. As the wheel on the left would hit the carpet first, it would slow down, while the wheel on the right is still going fast on the tiles. This momentary difference in speed between the two wheels causes the car to bend inwards, towards the normal. Now, of course, refraction isn't as simple as this analogy, as there are much more than two wavefronts interacting at the same time. Reflection can also be explained using the concept of wavelets. As seen in the tutorial, when the wavelets are reflected, they do not change speed since there is no change in refractive index. Instead, when the wavelets impact the surface of the second medium, they are reflected according to their incident angles. Huygens' Principle and Diffraction When light goes through an opening with a barrier, every point on the light within the opening creates a circular wave which propagates outwards. So now that we've talked so much about each theory, which one is correct and how do we know? Some of the experiments that came in the 18th century that provided evidence of the nature of light included Young's double slit experiment, Poisson's dot and Foucault's experiment. Young's double slit experiment, performed in 1803, was the first challenge to the particle theory of light. In Young's experiment, monochromatic light is shown through two very narrow parallel slits. The light eventually hits the screen with a relatively larger distance from the slits. The experimental results showed that the light superimposed, forming a pattern of constructive and destructive interference. Newton's model could not account for the effect seen by Young, one of the first inconsistencies with the particle theory. Another experiment that proved Huygens' theory was Poisson's dot, performed in 1819. If someone is being hit with objects, their best chance to avoid getting hit is to hide behind a larger object. If someone is throwing pebbles at you and you hide behind a rock, anything thrown at you will just hit the rock. On the other hand, if you stand in a stream of water and want to hide from a wave, standing behind a rock won't help anything as waves can bend around solid objects. Poisson reasoned that if light was a wave, then when it is shined on a perfectly spherical object, the light would bend in such a way that the waves would meet in the exact centre of the shadow of the object. This would produce a bright, visible spot. After conducting the experiment, he found a bright spot right in the middle of the shadow. There was no way that the particle model of light was able to explain this phenomenon, leading to the increased belief that Huygens' theory of wavelets is the right one. The last experiment conducted that disproved Newton's theory completely was Foucault's experiment, 
where he measured the speed of light in water. This experiment was conducted in 1850. Foucault used a small steam turbine to spin a mirror. A beam of light was reflected from the first mirror to another mirror 9 meters away. When it returned, the first mirror had rotated a little, causing the returning beam to be deflected a little below the source light beam. The beam in air returned 60 nanoseconds after it was first sent. Foucault then introduced a long tube of water in the light's path. If Newton was right, then the speed of light in water would be greater than in air, as according to Newton, light particles have a greater attraction force to water than air. So the time it should take for the beam to return would be less than 60 nanoseconds, and it would deflect less than the beam in the air. Foucault found that when the water tube was used, the light beam was deflected farther from the source than when only air was used. This showed that light travels more slowly in water than in air, which decisively collapsed Newton's theory. By mid-1850s, everyone was completely sure that light is a wave. Okay, so now that we've talked about both Huygens and Newton's theories, as well as the evidence that supported or refuted each one, how would we go about actually answering a question on this? This example would show the way a HSE question might include this concept, as well as the proper way to answer it and the marking criteria. The first question is, compare the properties of light as proposed by Newton's corpuscular theory of light and Huygens' wave theory of light, which is three marks. The marking criteria shown indicates what needs to be done to get the full three marks. As it is a compare question, both the similarities and differences between the properties must be listed. The sample answer is done in a table format, so the properties can be easily seen side by side. However, it is also okay to answer this question in a paragraph. As the previous question was a compare question, it was relatively easy and only required recalling information. This next question requires the ability to apply the content learnt to properly answer the question. Evaluate how experimental results found throughout the 18th century contributed to proving either Huygens or Newton's theory of light, which is 7 marks. The full answer is shown on the screen and the main points to include are describing the features and characteristics of each experiment indicating how the experimental results either challenged or worked with each theory, and providing a final evaluation at the end of the answer, indicating which theory was accepted. So, where are we today? Well, light turned out to be a little more complicated than first thought, and even today we are still not sure on the exact nature of light. What we believe, though, is that both Newton and Huygen were partially correct. That is, light has properties of both a particle and a wave, and these properties differ depending on how you look at it.